Hey guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. So I've been talking a lot in my videos about locality boas, but I never actually defined what a locality boa is. And it's really not quite that straightforward as you might think. Today I want to explore this question and some other issues that are related to the whole locality boa concept. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate if you would subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any future BOA videos. There are really two concepts that we have to discuss when it comes to defining what a locality BOA is. And the first concept I think is the more simple of the two, and that is the concept of purity. And so a locality BOAs are pure of that locality. And in fact, I came up with a definition of locality BOA. I just wanted to read it so I didn't uh, get any of this incorrect. But to me, a locality BOA is a BOA with reliable documentation as to its origin of ancestry, and it has not been crossed with BOAs from another ancestral location. So all of the BOAs in this particular line can be traced back to a specific locality where their ancestors originated. They're pure, they don't have any BOAs from another locality that's been crossed into them. So essential to the concept of locality BOAs are that the locality of BOA, it's a pure line and it doesn't have any other locality mixed in. The second concept behind locality BOAs is a little harder to pin down, and that is what exactly constitutes a locality. For example, how large of a land area are we talking about? And if we have two animals from different localities, does there have to be a way by examining them that we could differentiate the two based on, for example, physical characteristics? In addition, do localities in the wild have some kind of mechanism to prevent them from interbreeding, such as a geographic isolation. And so I'm gonna explore a few different scenarios here um, with regard to defining a locality. And there's not really an easy answer here, and I know that a lot, everyone has their own idea. So please feel free to comment based on your opinion. I'm just gonna kind of lay out the way that I see it as far as loca what a locality BOA is. In my opinion, the most well-defined locality BOAs are those that are geographically isolated in a small environment away from other populations of BOAs. For example, the island BOAs, and this is a Craw Key BOA. This is from an island off of the coast of Belize. And so at some point, possibly thousands of years ago, a small population of BOAs made it to this island and they started to evolve separately from the mainland Belize BOAs and they evolved in response to the limited resources to this smaller size that we know as these dwarf uh, island boas. And as we know, and as I've discussed before, there are various other types of island boas like Hog Island and Pearl Island. And these are a pretty well-defined locality because they can be traced back to the specific island and they look different from the mainland counterparts. It's not that hard to tell the difference between a Belize Island boa and a mainland Belize boa. The islands we're talking about don't necessarily have to be surrounded by water. We're just referring to habitat islands that are geographically isolated from other habitats where boas live, so there's no mixing of genes. This is a Tarahumara mountain boa. These are from the mountains of northern Mexico and they live in isolated habitats above the desert. Um, they constitute what are known as sky islands. So this is fragmented habitat. And there's no mixing of genes from outside boas with this Tarahumara population. So when you have geographic isolation like this, especially with a small population, you can have rapid evolutionary change. So the example of the Tarahumara mountain boa is a really well-defined locality and I don't think anyone would really question that these boas are different biologically from other populations of boa. Another example of a locality boa that's similar to an island boa, although not completely surrounded by water, are the Paraguanera boas from the Paraguana Peninsula in northwest uh, Venezuela. And this is an interesting peninsula because it's, it's kind of a round-shaped landmass 
that's connected by this very long skinny isthmus to the mainland of Venezuela. So you have these boas out there on the peninsula that although they're not completely cut off by the land, they're pretty isolated from boas in the rest of Venezuela. So it's an isolated group. They've been evolving on their own away from the other boas and from the gene pool and the other boas of Venezuela. And they've evolved into this pretty distinctive form. It's a kind of a smaller, you know, dwarf form. And the characteristics, interestingly, are kind of in between that of boa imperator and the true red tail boa, boa constrictor constrictor. So, you know, the Paragu Paraguanera or Paraguana Peninsula boa is another really well-defined locality boa. So when we're talking about island boas, these typically form a really nice, well-defined locality. But when we're talking about mainland boas, it's often a little harder to define what constitutes a legitimate locality. So when we're talking about boa constrictor constrictor, the true red tail, as we know, these animals live over a very large chunk of the continent of South America. But of course, if you take one from Peru and one from Suriname, even though these are the same subspecies, they look pretty much different to a trained a boa uh, enthusiast. And I don't think it's really hard to tell the difference, even if you're not very well trained in, you know, uh, in boa constrictors. However, you can also subdivide that boa constrictor constrictor down into specific large land areas. For example, we could differentiate the boa constrictor constrictor from the Amazon with that from the Guiana Shield in northern South America, the countries of Guiana, Suriname, French Guiana, and also a part of northern Brazil. You could break it down by country where you have the Suriname, the Guiana, the northern Brazil, which is typically how localities have been defined. And then you can break it down even more by the specific village or town where the animal was uh, originally collected, such as the Pokagon Suriname. There is a sort of implication in locality boa hobby that the more well-defined a locality can be made and the more pure that you can keep it, the better it is for the hobby and for the animals. And I would say that this isn't always the case. And it has to do with the fact that just because two boas are from the same locality, it doesn't mean they're going to look similar or even have similar characteristics. And it's also been demonstrated that you can find boas from two separate localities, even separated by many, many miles, which look essentially identical. And so, as we all know, there's this whole debate about the Suriname versus the Guiana true red tail. I'll let you guess which one this is. But there's, it's long been held that there's a difference. And of course, this is really the, the definition of Suriname and Guiana are political. These are just countries. They're divided by a river, but it's really not an effective barrier at preventing the animals from interbreeding. In addition, animals have often been collected from one country and imported out of the other, which had led to confusion as to their actual origin. So many people have questioned whether Guiana and Suriname are really two distinct biologically distinct boas, many collectors simply don't care. It doesn't even matter if there's a legitimate biological difference that you can measure, like a, a physical characteristic or a genetic marker or something like that. Just the very fact that they can know that they're from one country or one location versus the other, that's enough. Because of this, it's not always clear cut what is and what isn't a legitimate locality. And on the one hand, we want the animals to be as pure as possible. We want to preserve these localities and not cross them with other localities. But if we're talking about smaller and smaller areas of ancestral locality, then we're going to really be limiting the captive gene pool. And also, we're maybe artificially defining an, an entity of a locality that really isn't any different from, say, an animal collected from a village that was you know, 100 miles away. Ideally, we want to be able to differentiate between any biological taxons, which a locality essentially is, on the basis of some kind of morphological or physical characteristic. 
And if you can't tell that there's any kind of biological difference between two localities based on this, you have to question if there really is a difference between the localities. So this is how many people see it, but then many other locality collectors simply don't care. All that they're concerned with is that their particular boa originates from a specific defined locality and they don't want to cross it with any boa from another locality, even if there aren't any discernible characteristics. To muddy the waters a little more, the location of locality for a boa is often misrepresented. For example, Peruvian boas are said to have two main localities of BCC. There's the Pacalpa and the Iquitos locality, like this one. However, Iquitos and Pacalpa are simply two large cities in Peru that have airports and they're in the Amazon. So uh, collectors will typically bring animals from as far as 100 or more miles from these airports and they'll be shipped out of those airports. So they're not necessarily originating from these cities. And it's also been reported that many boas that are labeled as Suriname actually originated in Guyana and vice versa. You know, sometimes one of the countries would be close to export. So collectors would simply collect in one country and then they would ship them out of a country that was open to export. Unfortunately, the only real way of having precise locality information on a boa is to collect it yourself. And for the vast majority of us boa locality hobbyists, that would of course be impossible. Another example of a sort of conundrum that I'm facing regarding the localities of my boas applies to my two red tail boas from Venezuela. I have two different types of these Venezuelan red tail boas. So the first are a bloodline that is, can be traced back to Gus Renfro and Ron Greenberg, and these were animals produced by my buddy Michael Casey. And then I also have a pair of these Tomatama Venezuela boas, which were established by Terry Cullen. And so I have pretty good reliable information. These animals are from the village of Tomatama, which is at the confluence of two rivers in southern Venezuela. Um, when I compare them to my other Venezuelan boas, they're very similar looking. The colors are very similar, the markings are very similar, the smaller size is very similar. So I would say that biologically, they're probably not differentiable. You can't really tell the difference based on any kind of morphological or physical or behavioral characteristic, possibly even the DNA level. Although, you know, the numbers that I have are too small to really be sure if there would be a genetic difference. So for the time being, I'm planning on keeping them separate. And in fact, I paired up my Tomatama pair for the first time this year. And so fortunately, these are from two different bloodlines. So hopefully I'll have some babies. But um, these are very rare boas. And so in the long term, it's probably not going to be possible to keep these as a separate bloodline or separate breeding group without introduction of more wild-caught stock, which unfortunately looks like it's, it's highly unlikely to happen. So in the future, I face the decision of whether to keep these maintained as a separate population or whether to cross them with my other Venezuelan boas. And, you know, in that, in that case, are we talking about a less pure animal? And I would say probably not for some of the reasons that I mentioned. Um, but I'd like to hear what you think. So, you know, please comment below your opinions about what is and what isn't a legitimate locality and how you think uh, boa hobbyists should define locality, how narrowly we should define it moving forward. The last concept I wanted to talk about in this video is the idea of the locality as a morph, in a sense. And so because we have very small populations of locality animals compared to the genetic diversity in the wild, and because it's unfortunate that for most of these localities, we don't have wild caught animals that can contribute to the gene pool. It's basically an isolated captive population. We're gonna have rapid change in these uh, populations and captivity. And at some point they really cease being representative of the true locality boa. 
because we hadn't replenished them with the wild caught genes. And also because we're both consciously and unconsciously selecting for animals that are doing better in captivity and that have more of the characteristics that we like as boa keepers. So at some point, it's really gonna be incorrect to think of a locality boa as a true locality boa, when in fact, it's really a captive representation of a wild locality. And so I think at some point in the future, it's gonna be more accurate and more honest for many types of locality boas as to really think of them as locality type rather than truly representative of locality as it exists in the wild. So to sum it up, there's often not an easy answer to some of these questions. As locality boa breeders, we often face a daunting task and that we wanna keep our locality boas as pure as possible while simultaneously avoiding the consequences of inbreeding. And sometimes we have to really think about what does and what doesn't constitute a locality in order to best manage the captive populations of boas. So I hope this video was helpful. As always, I'd love to hear your comments. I know there's a lot of kind of open-ended questions here, so please you know, feel free to express your opinion below. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.